Today is June 23rd, 2025, and you're listening to Space News First Up. Discover your next mission in the space industry with the Space News Job Exchange. Visit spacenews.com jobs to find top aerospace roles and connect with leading employers. And for employers, use discount code J-O-B-E-X for 15% off your next purchase. Here are today's top headlines in space. An Atlas V lifted off Monday morning carrying the second set of Amazon Project Kuiper satellites. United Launch Alliance is testing a version of OpenAI to help it with some tedious tasks. Jared Isaacman said he is interested in pursuing, outside of NASA, an initiative he planned to implement if he had become NASA administrator. Airbus executives said efforts to turn the company's space business around are going well. Pentagon officials say they are still a long way from their goal of creating seamless, interoperable space communications networks. And Ariane Space said it will work as soon as possible to reach its planned Ariane 6 launch rate, but that may take years. First Up is produced by Space News, the industry standard for professional space journalism. Visit spacenews.com for breaking news, policy updates, and original analysis. We begin today with news reported by Spaceflight Now that an Atlas V lifted off Monday morning carrying the second set of Amazon Project Kuiper satellites. The rocket lifted off at 6.54 a.m., eastern from Cape Canaveral, Florida, after a technical problem scrubbed a launch attempt last week. Neither United Launch Alliance nor Amazon provided many details about the launch after the second stage ignited, but ULA confirmed successful payload deployment a little more than an hour after liftoff. The rocket carried 27 Kuiper satellites. The second batch of operational satellites after the first was launched on another Atlas V in April. Amazon plans to launch more than 3,200 satellites for the Constellation, providing broadband services. United Launch Alliance is testing a version of OpenAI to help it with some tedious tasks. ULA has deployed what it calls Rocket GPT to about 150 employees as part of a trial program. The tool uses a government-compliant version of OpenAI's technologies running on a secure cloud computing platform. ULA CEO Tori Bruno said the company is super excited about using Rocket GPT to help with tasks like writing reports, drafting government proposals, and analyzing flight telemetry. He said the technology is not intended to replace employees, but instead as a research assistant, noting that AI systems still make mistakes requiring human oversight, meaning employees remain accountable for final work products. Jared Isaacman said he is interested in pursuing, outside of NASA, an initiative he planned to implement if he had become NASA administrator. In comments after accepting a National Space Society Award Saturday, Isaacman said one of his goals for NASA was a concept in which NASA would provide support to outside organizations interested in pursuing scientific missions. While Isaac Mann's nomination to lead NASA was withdrawn three weeks ago, he said he was interested in trying to test that concept and see if you could fund an interesting robotic mission with academic organizations. He said that while people are rightfully upset about proposed NASA budget cuts, he still believed that this was the best time for human spaceflight since the 1960s. Airbus executives said efforts to turn the company's space business around are going well. In comments at last week's Paris Air Show and a separate Airbus business update event, executives of Airbus Defense and Space said the company's space business was stabilizing after cost and schedule problems on some programs that led the company to take $1.5 billion in charges last year. That included work on OneSat, a line of software reconfigurable geocommunication satellites, the first of which is scheduled for delivery to customers in 2026. Airbus is in talks with Leonardo and Thales Alenia Space to potentially combine their space businesses, with Airbus officials saying such a consolidation is necessary for Europe to more effectively compete globally. Pentagon officials say they are still a long way from their goal of creating seamless, interoperable space communications networks. The goal is creating what the Defense Department calls Enterprise SATCOM, a virtualized software-defined network that could automatically reroute communications between military, commercial, and allied nations' satellites if an adversary jams one satellite system. 
but the reality is an ecosystem full of manual processes, hardware silos, and incompatible standards. What's needed, government and industry officials said, are standards analogous to those that allow smartphones to operate on different networks. Ariane Space said it will work as soon as possible to reach its planned Ariane 6 launch rate, but that may take years. At the Paris Air Show last week, Ariane Space CEO David Cavalloles said the company still planned for four more Ariane 6 launches this year, after one launch in March. The company has a goal of 10 Ariane 6 launches per year, but Cavalloles did not commit to a specific year the company would reach that rate only that it expected to do so by the time it is scheduled to start launching Iris-squared communication satellites in 2029. He added the company is seeing strong interest in the Ariane 6 from government and commercial customers, including those worried about relying on a single launch provider. Share your company's news with the entire space industry through Stellar Dispatch, the press release service from Space News. Learn more and use discount code SD2106 for 15% off when you submit yours at spacenews.com slash Stellar Dispatch. In other news, China launched a geocommunication satellite Friday. A Long March 3B lifted off at 8.37 a.m., eastern from the Sichang Satellite Launch Center and placed into a geostationary transfer orbit, the ChinaSat 9C, Zhongxing 9C, communications satellite. The 5,500-kilogram satellite is based on a DFH-4E satellite platform, an enhanced version of China's widely used DFH-4 satellite bus, and will provide improved regional coverage for TV and radio with KU band and other frequency band transponders. It will replace China Sat 9 at 92.2 degrees east in geo. Spaceflight now reports that SpaceX launched a set of Starlink satellites early Monday after a 24 hour delay. A Falcon 9 lifted off from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station at 1.58 a.m. Eastern Monday, placing 27 Starlink satellites into orbit. The launch was previously planned for early Sunday, but the countdown was stopped less than a minute before liftoff because of a poor signal from the rocket's flight termination system. Space.com reports that weather has delayed a Blue Origin New Shepard suborbital launch. The company scrubbed the launch of the NS-33 mission Saturday morning about 10 minutes before liftoff because of high winds and called off another launch attempt early Sunday morning. The company has not set a new launch date for the flight, which is carrying six customers. NASA's Psyche Spacecraft has resumed use of its electric propulsion system after switching to a backup fuel line. NASA said Friday, the spacecraft's electric thrusters started operating last week after being turned off since early April. Engineers concluded that a valve malfunction reduced the flow of xenon propellant to the thrusters and switched to a redundant fuel line. Psyche will fire its thrusters for three months between now and November to keep the spacecraft on its trajectory to the asteroid of the same name arriving in 2029. NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, LRO, has spotted the likely impact site of iSpace's lunar lander. Images from LRO showed a dark smudge, surrounded by a patch of lighter regolith, that scientists believe marks the impact location of Resilience, iSpace's second lunar lander mission. Resilience was attempting a landing June 5th when contact was lost about a minute and 45 seconds before landing. Telemetry indicated that resilience was traveling far faster than planned at the time contact was lost. The Japanese company will hold a briefing late Monday to discuss its investigation into the mission.